Okay, two tests we'll look at to look at potential supraspinatus lesion. Could be tendonitis, a tear, or a massive tear of the supraspinatus. First test we'll do is the full can test, and then followed by the empty can test. Full can test, a patient can be seated or standing in front of you. You'll take the shoulders in the plane of the scapula, and up to approximately 30 to 45 degrees. Have the patient, in this case, thumbs up, externally rotated shoulders. Hold the position there as you apply pressure just proximal to the wrist. Ask the patient to hold, so hold there. And you can do this bilaterally to assess both shoulders. Press down and see how the patient responds to that. If the patient has weakness and or pain, it's indicative of supraspinatus lesion, again being potential tendonitis or a tear. Depending on how much weakness, if she has extreme weakness and pain, it can either be severe tendonitis or a pot potential massive tear of the supraspinatus. The full cam test is similar, same positioning, plane of the scapula up to about 30 to 45 degrees. This time internal rotation, again ask the patient to hold as you apply a downward force and they isometrically hold and assess for weakness and pain either side. I found in the past that test tends to be a little more accurate, but uh, sensitivity and specificity are approximately equal on both with moderate um, accuracy with both of those tests. Some testers will take the shoulder up to 90 degrees, whether it's a full can or empty can test. Problem with that, especially with internal rotation, I find a lot of times that will elicit some impingement syndrome and cloud up the findings. So I think it does work better to keep it more at 30 or 45 degrees when you resist. And that's the full can and empty can test for supraspinatus.